Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be how to make her want, value, and appreciate you more. So I've got two different emails today. The first one is from a guy. He's been following me for about nine months, and he got lazy, and he only read part of 3% Man, watched a few videos, got himself a girlfriend that he really liked, and then he never really looked at the information again. And now recently, his girlfriend has dumped him. He's got back into the work, obviously, now that he's gotten dumped. And he's pretty bummed because there was a trip that he and his now ex-girlfriend were supposed to go on that she's now taking a friend to. And so he obviously still wants her back, but just goes to show when people don't follow instructions, things are going to go sideways. And the second email is from a guy. He says he's been following me for 10 years. And in the past year, he got a girlfriend that he says is like a once in a decade type of girlfriend. But he admits that he got kind of complacent. Things started going a little sideways. She started kind of taking him for granted. So he took a little bit of a step back. And so the idea with the two emails is I want to talk about the importance of making sure that the other person, obviously in this case, a woman, is choosing you also. Because you re- when a woman treats you properly, you reward her with the greatest gift you can give anybody, which is the gift of your time. And when she doesn't, you give her the gift of missing you and you match and mirror her actions. So if she starts to show that she's not really valuing or appreciating you, you got to set and enforce those healthy boundaries and let her feel what it is like when you stop moving forward and you start backing up a little bit. So I got a quote that I wrote and we'll go through the first guy's email. The quote says, people will treat you as you view yourself to be. If you love and value yourself, you will set and enforce healthy boundaries. If you don't, you'll let people walk all over you. Women won't respect you, love you, or stick around. If you want to be in an amazing relationship, you must first learn to view and accept yourself as amazing, likable, and lovable. It's not about finding the right person but becoming the right person. You must become what you want to attract. So the first guy says, Hi, Corey, I hope hope you're well. I found your work about nine months ago, and it completely changed my life. I went from zero dates in years to multiple dates and getting a hot girlfriend in a matter of months. The problem with me back when I first found your work was that I only read about one-third of the book. Come on, man. And only saw a couple dozen videos. I never got to the important relationship part of the book, which was a horrible mistake. I'm sure you saw in videos and even in the beginning of 3% Man where I say read it 10 to 15 times and the reason why. Because each time you go through it, you get about 8 to 10% of the info. That's why you got to go through it 10 to 15 times. And this guy didn't believe me, didn't take me seriously. He's like... Who cares with that shaved head dude? I got a hot girlfriend now. I'm different. I'm going to show him I'm different. I'm like, okay, how'd that work out for you? Well, we're reading his email, so obviously not too good. He says, after eight months of dating my girlfriend, she decided that she needed a break from me, told me she needed space and time to work on herself. It's amazing how it doesn't matter what country or cultural or religious background they're Women say the same shit to guys, no matter where they are. That's always so amazing to me. I could talk to somebody on the other side of the world and the women say the exact same things. Which in normal English means she wants to break up. Now, after reading your book three times, and currently I'm on my fourth read and seeing over a hundred of your videos, now he takes me seriously. Now he's got pain in his life. People will do more to avoid pain than they'll do to gain pleasure. In the beginning, he had some success. He's getting that pleasure. He's like, ah, it's painful to read that book 10 to 15 times. I don't, I don't want to listen to Corey's voice 10 to 15 times, whatever. But at the end of the day, if you don't follow instructions, you're going to suffer the consequences. I know the reasons why she left me. I became complacent and unmysterious, and she knew everything there was to know about me. He actually says compliant. I don't know if he was trying to say compliant or complacent. Either way, it's just the same difference. He didn't know the book 
He hadn't completely changed his behavior from his old beta male ways that kept the pussy embargo in place. He learned a few things. The pussy embargo lifted. He's like, I got it. Pride cometh before the fall, as they say. There was no mystery to my character anymore. After the breakup, I decided to go no contact, and then she called me two weeks later to meet at a cafe for closure. So if you'd been following my work, and as discussed in Seven Principles Get an X Back, when you've broken up and you walk away and you never look back, you don't meet for coffee or lunch for closure. If she wants to see you, she can come to your place in the evening to make dinner together. Once again, he shows that he was compliant. He has a rubber spine. He was just so thirsty to spend some time with her, he went and did a platonic thing instead of the romantic things that I instruct. Again, he's not following what I teach. And therefore, he's suffering the consequences, which you'll see. At the meetup, she told me she wants us to stay friends. In other words, I want you to be a male orbiter in backup position in case it doesn't work out with my new guy. Then I can always bounce or monkey branch back to you because you're a pussy and you got no spine to stand up to me. So I always know I can have you as a backup in case I don't find anybody better who actually acts like a man consistently. That's what she's really saying. I know it's harsh, but I'm not here to blow sunshine up your butt. That doesn't serve you or anybody else that's in the same situation or about to be in the same situation. I want you to get it. I want you to understand the pain that you're going to experience if you don't do things the right way. Because breaking up with your hot girlfriend after a long pussy embargo, it sucks. It's like swallowing a bunch of glass. It's not fun. And I told her, I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in being friends. I'm only interested in you romantically. I cannot imagine seeing you with another guy. So if you ever change your mind, give me a call. So again, he's using bits and pieces and cherry picking, not following. Again, he gave up his power by going to meet her at a cafe. And as I say in Seven Principles Get an X Back, the farthest distance that you're willing to travel to see her is the distance that it takes to go from wherever you are in your house to let her in through your front door to make dinner together. If she doesn't want to come over, then you say, give me a call in a couple weeks. Maybe I'll meet you out at a cafe for closure. And so there it ended. A week later, she flew to another country for vacation with a friend with tickets she had bought for both of us a month earlier before our breakup for my birthday. She sent me a message on the day of the flight explaining that she is using our tickets to fly with a friend. She kind of rub it in your face because you walked away and you stood up to her and said, even though you went to the cafe, which I wouldn't have recommended, but the bottom line is you said, I'm not interested in being a friend so she's telling you i'm taking a friend almost like in a way she's saying oh well you didn't want to be my friend so i'll take another friend with me she's trolling you trying to see if you're bothered if she really truly didn't care you would have never heard from her again and that she's sorry didn't work out between us yeah i'm sure she is i'm sure she's playing the world's smallest violin as her friend beats up her pelvis I didn't respond to this message because there was nothing really to respond to. And so here comes my question. The relationship, I would have probably trolled her back. I was like, well, have fun with your friend. I would have said any. I mean, not saying anything is fine too because it's like she's basically rubbing it in her face. So it's not the kind of thing where you validate that or you reward that because again... This was supposed to be your birthday present. And so literally as she's flying out of town, she's giving you that big hairy middle finger, trying to troll you and make you feel bad. And their correct response is not to be perturbed. And you didn't respond at all. So you didn't give her a chance to gloat or feel good or feel like she won up to you. The relationship ended somewhat fast, harshly, and with little communication whatsoever. Well, women typically stay with a guy until their feelings are mostly gone. In your book, you state early on that relationships should end in a loving way, but our breakup was nothing like this. Well, at the end of the day, she blew the relationship up, not you. Granted, you didn't learn the book, and so you didn't do the things that were required to keep her attracted. But at the end of the day, she fucked it up, and so therefore, it's her job to fix it. 
She has to pursue you to fix things. And going off with your birthday present and a friend is not how she fixes things. We didn't really talk anything through. I didn't answer her text. And also I felt hurt that she used tickets for my birthday to fly with a friend, possibly another guy. What can I do to remove this bitter taste from the ending of an amazing relationship we both had? Fuck her best friend, go out with one of her girlfriends, go hang out, have fun, and hook up with new women. Never call or text her again for any reason. Women have to know that if they push you too far, you'll walk and never look back. That means never. And what's going on right now is you're doubting. And again, because you didn't read the book 10 to 15 times, you're looking for a reason to pursue. And if you pursue, you're rewarding bad behavior. She literally took your birthday present that she bought for you and took some other dude more than likely who's beating up her pelvis. That's not much of a birthday present. That's a fuck you present. And we don't accept fuck you presents from ex-girlfriends. Unless she actually literally wants to fuck you. So I wouldn't do anything. Don't feel bad about it. What's done is done. You should be reading the book, preparing yourself, talking to other women, dating other women. If you have mutual friends and you know things will get back to her, anybody that asks about, hey, what happened with you guys? Oh, we had a great time ran its course and I wish her the best and man it's like I got back in the dating apps I guess it must be after all these lockdowns in it women are so aggressive I had three dates this week really beautiful girls I'm having a blast so this has actually been a blessing in disguise I got three beautiful women blowing up my phone it's like I, I mean hey it, it sucks that it ended but man I'm having a damn good time those are the kinds of things you want to get back to her that you've moved on and you're happy Because then it shows that you're totally unperturbed. And then she'll start second-guessing herself. Especially when she starts testing the new guy or any other beta male orbiters that have been hanging around. And you've sounds like you completely moved on and you're having even more fun now that she's not a part of your life. And now it'll really upset her. That'll piss her off. And then she'll want to have to come and have makeup sex and you guys can, she can fuck you like she hates you. Which will be a good thing. So don't call or text her again for any reason. You don't need closure or any of that bullshit. You're just looking for an excuse to chase her again. And again, you don't reward that kind of behavior. So let's go to the second guy's email. He says, Coach, been following you for 10 years, and I've applied your advice to great success over this time, so thank you. I landed a once-every-decade girl recently. She's the hottest woman I've ever been with and has all of her shit together. It was an online match, and I quickly quickly set a date and got off the phone. Five weeks in, and this girl has definitely been testing me. She had some flakiness around date three and tried to move the date, and I remained completely unperturbed and let her make the next date, which went well. I admit I did break the once-a-week rule and tried to make a second date the same week, but she had plans. Once a week works. Because, again, it wasn't her idea. That's why you do the once per date, one week or one date per week, basically, is you're taking measured steps. You're taking your time. You're trying to go slightly slower than she does so her interest creeps up. And when her interest creeps up, she starts calling you and texting you throughout the week and then use those as opportunities to set the next date because if a woman's reaching out, you should assume she wants to see you and make a date. That's what you're trying to facilitate. You're trying to make it easy for her to fall in love with you because you're awesome. That's how you should view yourself, like the quote I read earlier discusses. If you act like a catch, women will treat you like a catch. If women start jerking you around and testing you, like in this case, he tried to speed things up a little bit and it didn't go well. There was actually a drop in her interest. She became a little too comfortable. So we had to have to make her a little uncomfortable. It's a scientific fact that women are more attracted to men whose feelings are unclear. And so if she starts backing up and not taking you as seriously as she was, then you match and mirror that behavior. Again, the greatest gift you can give anybody is a gift of your time. And if they want to waste it or they don't appreciate it, then take it away from them. Don't give it to them. I decided last week to let her bring up getting together and to take a step back to make up for my eagerness. I know that's hard in that situation, especially when many days go by and you hear nothing. 
Four days went past of no contact and no more date talk. That's the kind of thing where you're like jumping out. The first time you do this, you're like, especially if you're with a girl you really like, oof, it's brutal. It's so hard. She messaged me, and keep in mind, this this is like the hottest girl he's been with in a in a decade, basically. Super hard to do that. But you have to. You gotta treat her like an equal. You gotta treat her like she's on your level. Not above your level, but at least on your level as an equal. And when she starts treating you like you're beneath her, which in essence she kind of did when she starts taking you for granted, then you just give her a dose of her own medicine. Let her see how that feels. She messaged me and I didn't suggest anything, which probably surprised her. Yep. She was all sure of herself and cocky. And then she reaches out and you don't even bring up getting together. She's going, "Uh uh-oh, maybe I pissed him off. Maybe he found somebody else. Well, guess what happened next? Hmm, I wonder. She suggested the date to me and is coming to my place with wine, etc. for dinner and drinks. Amazing how that works. When people treat you like you're irrelevant and you don't mean anything to them, give them the gift of missing you. The quickest way to get somebody else's attention is to remove yours, and that's what he did. So kudos to you for having the guts to do that because I know it's hard, especially with a once in a decade kind of girl. I'm sure you were trying to, you felt like you were jumping out of your skin. I know you say when she contacts you to make a date, but I read the situation and decided not to this time just to test her interest. Well, quite frankly, she's done it to you. If you're calling her and ask her on a date and she's like, eh, well, give her that back. See what she thinks. Not, it's not about being rude. Like in this case, he just simply didn't bring up getting together like he always had in the past. And that causes her to come become completely unsure of herself. And quite frankly, that's what women like. They want to know that you will be fine without them. They want you to be the rock in the mountain, the center of emotional strength in their life, not the other way around. Hope others can learn from this and not just stick to the exact same scripted messages each week. Well, the important thing is it's not about like being a robot. It's about responding to how she's showing up. If she's not valuing it, then you just don't spend as much time with her. If she has less enthusiasm to spend time with you, then guess what? Your enthusiasm level should drop with spending time with her, exactly like he did. And what happened? She got a complete attitude adjustment, which quite frankly, deep down, that's what she really wanted anyway. She wanted to, she wanted to feel what it's like to potentially not have you. Women have to know that if they push you too far, that you will walk and never look back. So that's two good examples. One guy that didn't follow instructions, the other guy that's been with me a decade, and thanks for sticking around all that time. I appreciate that. But the second guy's getting great results. And the first guy, that'll probably, because she's reaching out to him even though it's ended, so there's a good chance she's going to come back. And that friend that was on the trip, he'll probably fuck things up, especially when she worries that she may have lost you forever because you got more time in with her than the other guy does. You have nine months, and the other guy, well, we assume he's somebody she doesn't know that well. So if you got a question or a challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. (laughs) 